Lord, grant me the serenity to understand the things I cannot change. Grant me the courage to change the things that I can. And grant me the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today. Amen. You close to the edge, just don't move. My brother said his lawyer just gave him some bad news. Police found the drugs that were stashed in the bathroom. Not only that, but his court date approaching us fast too. So tell me what to do. Lord, you only seek the truth. If you want to bear fruit, then it needs to abide in you. If you seek transformation, it happens in solitude. Since I never had a shot, God threw me the alley hoop. I believe I can fly. Let me mingle with the angels. Heaven's in my peripheral. I see it from an angle. What's up, good people? It's your boy, Bro Troy. Bro Smith. Bro Kirk. And we are the Bro Code. Code. Tonight's show is sponsored by our community partners, Raleigh Founded. Raleigh Founded provides shared workspace and office suites for entrepreneurs, startups, and introvators. Raleigh Founded's mission is to foster inclusive communities of entrepreneurs who create lasting economic and social impact. Please visit them at raleighfounded.com. Make sure to like this post, not now, fellas, but when? Like right now. Right now, man. We appreciate everyone who's taking the time to support the Broco platform. We do ask that you go to Broco TV Productions on YouTube, as well as the Broco Show on all audio platforms. Fellas, what's happening, man? How y'all feeling, man? It's been a while, man. It, it is. Oh, I gotta get out the way. Another one. I'm not. It's, How you feeling, man? It's been a minute. It's been yeah. a minute. Uh, but it feels like we never left, really, man. It's good to see y'all. Indeed. I, I know all sorts of things have popped off since we last spoke, but uh, it's good to be back in the midst, man. Yeah, another location, too. You know, what, that's the beauty part of what we do, man. You never know where we'll be. So we do appreciate partnerships and having this partnership with Raleigh Founded. Man, the best is definitely yet to come. Absolutely. You know, Kurt, what's going on, man? man Talk good, to me. Man. I do miss, well, I miss Jason. I, I see you, Troy. Yeah, yeah you see him yeah. every day. I, kind of, I see him every day. I'm like, man, you probably tired of yeah, this Yeah, I'm probably tired of him. I ain't going to say it on camera, but I do miss you, though. Yeah, man, it does feel good, man. The roads are back together, man. Not that we ever left. Indeed, man. So, um... Every show we ask a question to talk about uh, similar to what the guest, right? Kind of along the lines. And tonight we have mm -hmm. a person that is in public relations. So public relations. over the years, you know, we've had some PR flops, if you may. Mm. So I'm curious, man. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What was that? Uh, uh, Jared? Jared. Well, 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 downfall of Jared, man. Yeah, the fat man. That, go to Subway, man. The fat man that <laughs> Lives Matter misstep. That was with Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner. Everybody remembers good old Janet Jackson with the nipple. Mm. Gonna have the nipple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, 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 what was that? I don't remember that. That had no, to be. Yeah, I'm about to say, hold on. Remember? How do you not remember the nipple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The BP oil spill, like I remember that as a kid, man, you know, and the big team coming, rolled into the gym. Yeah, I remember that. And then Samsung, we got to talk about that. Samsung with the exploding phones. As an iPhone contender, yeah, yeah you know we got a joke on Samsung, just a minute. Hey, I'm, 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 so, I'm, I'm just curious, man, when, when you think about those five, man, talk to me, man. What, do you, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, me, man. Like I say, I, I am a big Samsung guy. You know, I see. I, I've got yeah, I know. Got a joke about that. You know, the, the laundry. The refrigerator. The yeah. refrigerators, <laughs> yeah. all the TVs. So I, I ride with uh, Team Samsung and the, and the Androids. And so when I saw that happening, mm. you know, you already got to stick up for yourself just for being a Droid user versus all these uh, same olds using the iPhones. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it hurt. But at the same time, hey, to get to some sort of progress, you got to have a couple downfalls. So yeah. they learn, and before you know it, iPhone's going to have a phone that looks just like all the Samsungs. You know, mm. you know, they're, they're, they're every time Samsung puts something out, we do I, it better. IPhone, I know, I you know, get it. Uh, <laughs> iPhone is soon to come. So pretty soon, you're going to have a flip phone iPhone. I said it right here. You're going to have a flip iPhone before you know, it. just because Samsung did it and it's mm. working. Go ahead. What do you think, Kurt? I'm just quiet. <laughs> what do you think, Kurt? Like, I'm not even having this conversation. I'm an eye guy. It, like, I'm not getting no flip phone, though. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to, you know, but I, you're going to have something that folds. I guarantee you. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know about the flop, but what would you think about a flop? I don't know flop. Like, <laughs> you know, as, as a, as a dirty-minded kid, you know, I know which one yeah, I go to. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Janet, all day. but I don't think it was a flop. Yeah. I thought it was great. So, I, I, you know, I'm a Janet fan, though. Yeah. So, but I don't think there's any bad PR. Mm. Is all new? All new? Oh, it definitely ruined Janet for a minute. Did it? 
I mean, it got them talking about it. Justin, wait, 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 say that again? It helped it Justin. Got them talking. When they're talking about you, you're winning. There's no I, bad PR unless it goes over. There's some bad PR. Mm. But let's be honest. You can't you be popping a titty out at the <laughs> Super Bowl. Why not? Uh, <laughs> Mariah Carey got on TRL. Remember she got undressed on TRL? That's not bad, pup. That's, that's great, pup. That's Mariah. It works different. I think oh. it's situational, right? I would assume it's situational. You know, but Mariah's got her Christmas thing going. She's going to be thought of every year at least. But <laughs> Janet... You know, Jen is what, 50? Mm. You know, she she's was 40 at the time. Yeah. No, she's older than that now, I think. Yeah. But, you know, she was on the last little hurrah of her career. Mm. And you, you might have a point. It might have helped get her a couple more mentions. People probably paying a, a few more of her songs. Mm. But she got dragged to the mud. What and if it would have happened in this day and age of Dave Twitter and IG and things have grown viral? Because this was years ago that the Jen, this is like Justin in his beginning. Is there bad pub? There absolutely is. Because what we want is people to talk about us. Yeah. So is there bad pub? We're going to ask. Well, we're going to talk about that. Like, that's why is we have bad? who we have well, for the guests, right? right? Well, look, all great things happen collectively. Nothing great happens alone. Tonight's no different. Tonight, I think we have a young lady by the name of Melinda Jackson. I'm sorry? Ms. She's Jackson? Jackson. Is sorry, she crap? Ms. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I am for real. <laughs> I do believe she is in here somewhere. Miss Melinda Jackson, if you are in the building, we do ask that you come on the Bro Code Show. Uh-oh, there she is. There she is. Melinda's in the I'm here, building. I'm here. Um, What's going on, Melinda? No How are you to feeling Jaden today? Jackson. No Sorry, ladies? Guys. Oh, we talked about all that. I know, well, I have I have thoughts. I was like hollering, so we can get into that uh, in a little bit. Oh my goodness! Well, how are you feeling today? I'm good. I'm excited to be good. here with well, you. Welcome guys. to the Bro Code Show. The bros are definitely happy to have you. So I'm glad to be one of the bros today. You are officially <laughs> one of the bros Absolutely. today. Do so. we need to drink any like Monster Energy or like any protein shakes? I or think anything? prior to the show, I think we did. A, uh, yeah, I think we. Good on that. Okay. I, I think we're good. We had our tea, my ginseng, okay. and all of that good okay. stuff. I think we're good on that. Okay. Okay. But afterwards, you know. Yeah. We, we got to drink our bro shakes and yeah. protein shakes. Okay. So we get I can, ready. I, can I do like that, that name. I, can do that. I call them bro shakes. So. Well, Melinda, like for them. our listeners, those who are watching, they may not know who you are. So put some respect on your name. Okay. In 90 seconds or less, run okay. us your resume. All right. Um, my name is Melinda Jackson. I'm the owner of Melinda Jackson Public Relations based here in Raleigh. Um, my background is entertainment PR, and now I've translated that into um, a full-service PR firm here in Raleigh. Awesome, man. I love it. PR. And we talked a little bit earlier with our uh, other co-host, Miss A. Ruth Proctor, about what that looks like. But I'm curious, in your line of work, what is there a secret passion like... I know you're in PR, but there's something that people don't know about you that you like to do. Oh my God, um, that's hard. I, I'm a big, uh, well, I'm a big hiker, so I like to go on like okay. hiking trips, uh, okay. fly out to the Southwest and go on hikes um, and all of that fun stuff. The Grand Canyon, all the parks in uh, Utah, all that fun stuff. So I'm always trying to figure out a way to be able to take time off to go on a cool hike. Um, but also, I think something a lot of people don't know about me is like, I come from a very musical background. So yeah. um, I was always in show choirs and gospel choirs and I've sang at Carnegie Hall and been in the Macy's Parade and wow. all that fun stuff. And uh, I play a little bit of guitar and a little bit of piano. Um, but that's something I kind of gave up whenever I moved to LA because I was like, eh, I'm not good enough to do it professionally. I'll let those people do it, but I'll just support them that's in the back end. Right. So, you know, yeah. What type of guitar? I do a little dab uh -oh. guitar. Oh my yeah, God. I I, it's just regular guitar. I, I am a bit, yeah. Okay. I have an electric acoustic. Um, it's okay. a three fourth, so it's a little All smaller right. uh -huh. um, for, for my female frame. <laughs> but um, I don't have an amp for it because I don't want to <laughs> annoy my neighbors or anything. Okay. But. All right. I love that. You know, we've been able to lead a parade as well. You know, maybe not the Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Right? But I'm curious, now that I know that, you're a workout person. We talked about yep. that earlier. What's on your Spotify playlist? Oh, my God. Oh, my Spotify playlist for my workouts are insane. I actually share it with somebody. Um, it's a lot of, it's very, very bipolar. It's a lot of YG, um, J. Cole, but then you have to have, like, eighth grade dance party hits. Um, some of those are on there. Um, so you got Usher and things like that. But then um, a lot of, like, 2005 warp tour stuff so like taking back sunday and the use and like more of the punk rock stuff mm, okay. so it's very all over the place wow okay we're learning a little bit more like i saw this there was a quote that i saw on your ig it says 
it is up to you to find the beauty in everyday things. Melinda Jackson, what are those everyday things to you? Oh my gosh. So like I said, hiking, I love, I love just getting out in nature because I think, you know, we're always on screens and things like that. And it's, it's so much easier to be creative when you're just like kind of in a meditative state, like out in nature. So even if I can't, you know, go on a hike, which Raleigh doesn't really have that many real hikes, I'll, I'll, I go to, uh, um, Lake Lynn, which is what I call Turtle Pond, because there's always turtles yeah, everywhere. Turtle. So I go, I go and see my little turtle friends, my Ninja Turtles, and then um, so I, I try, just try to go on a walk like every single day, um, yeah. just to to get out and just like be inspired and, and breathe in that air and get the vitamin mm. D and all that fun stuff. I love yeah. nature as well, so I can dig it, man. Well, let's chew the meat, see out the bone. What you got, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss Lake Lynn walks. Yeah. I, I used to live right off of Lake Lynn. You gotta ask her about the PR. Yeah. I, no, we got, I, don't, I, don't, I can't sit through the whole show and not know if my answer was right, which I know it was. But. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so so we gave a number of choices. Okay. You know, the Kendall Jenner, the Subway, BP. Kendall Jenner solved racism, guys. I thought she did. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm, I'm joking. No, she did not. <laughs> yeah, <I'm joking. laughs> that was horrible. That was horrible. That was horrible. It, it should have never even made it to being shot. Like, mm, that, like, should have never made it off of a vision board. Mm. Mm. So, we'll stop. so that's bad PR. Is yes. that good? Good though for her, because she's still no. what a billionaire. No, or... I mean, the Kardashians are untouchable. They're they're literally untouchable. Yeah. Every single one of them have had these things that have just mm. like really should have demolished them, and yeah. it hasn't. They are untouchable. Is there is there something where you get to that level where you can't be pulled down? Because you're right, they are. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Donald Trump I don't said really, that level. But yeah. we won't get into that. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. let's not. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know many other people that are like that. And yeah. like literally every single year, one of them has something that should, that anybody else would be completely canceled for. But they just keep going. And I don't know what the secret sauce is. And I've mm. worked with them before. They're very kind. They're very smart. They know what they're doing. So I also don't understand why these things keep happening. Yeah. It's there's some disconnect there, or maybe they just know that they're untouchable, and they're like, "It's fine. People will love us. Let's just try." But mm. Mm. I could go on tangents because I still don't know how Pete Davidson got Kim Kardashian, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. That game? What you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean he, he, he got he pulled okay. up game. It's, I'll tell you exactly what it is. And we were talking a little bit about this kind of stuff <laughs> earlier. I, I love to pull out some therapy stuff, but it's essentially you have this woman who. You know, I just watched the latest episodes of their show, mm. and Kim was saying on there, like, Kanye has picked out all my outfits for me for the past nine years. Yeah, I saw that. She, she has had no autonomy. Like, she's not had to, been able to make a decision for herself. She, he has picked out her outfits for her. Her mom, you know, plans their lives. She has other people in her business that do everything for her. She doesn't really get to make decisions for herself. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a super codependent relationship like that and you have no autonomy and, and everything is decided by this other person and you're finally free from that mm. and you have this person who kind of identifies kind of mirrors your previous partner with the mental health issues but is more vocal about it and actually tries to get help and is a little more compassionate more funny of course she's going to go for that yeah like it makes sense to me on just like a therapy level absolutely well, so maybe that makes sense to you now that I've broken it down a little bit. That, that helps, but then you look at him and it, I lose, I lose it. I, I, I would, I would love to be <laughs> Pete's best friend. I but, think he's but just it, the it just, thing. But it just shows you that doesn't matter. Yeah. If you bond in that space where I'm hurt, that trauma. Because he was still living with his, his, his mom. Matter. Well, okay, it, no, his mom lives in his house. Okay, mm. so that it's his house. It, he he likes to say, "Oh, I live with my mom." It's his house. Uh, he recognizes he has mental health issues yeah. and he doesn't want to live alone and I think that's, that's, that's admirable and you know his dad passed away in 9-11 his mm. mom is alone and you know it's his way of taking care of her I think that's a great space and mental health is a big subject mm -hmm. we'll talk more we got Melinda Jackson PR extraordinaire right here at Raleigh Founded Bro Code we'll be right back we always say that hope plus options equals success when there's a lack of hope, oftentimes gravitate towards unfavorable decisions. When we can provide hope plus options, our children will ultimately be better. Uh, through love, consistency, opportunity, and exposure, that's how we really touch these kids. That's how we empower them, that's how we inspire them, and that's how we encourage them. And that's what we do well here at Wild Force. Yeah. Tell him, let him use ya. He just beginning, baby, no, he ain't through yet. Yeah. 
Maybe you should let him use you Try to get another place you need to, yeah, yeah. You should let him use you I know you're winning and you're trying to drip too, yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. baby, go on, let him call that You know you always on time for me And know you never told lies to me Tell me what you want me, Lord You can call me your property You never been rude, no Don't know what's going on anymore I could try and do things hey, my it's way. DJ D Dub. D Dub. D Dub. D Dub. D Dub. Welcome back to the Bro Code Show. We're here with Melinda Jackson at the Raleigh Founded downtown location off of Harrington Street. So uh, we're going to get up into your background a little bit, learn a little bit more about what makes you tick. I'm, I'm hopeful you could share with us more about what led you into this field and kind of what were some of your early inspirations growing up? Yeah, so um, I kind of went into it a little bit earlier, but I can deep dive into it a little more now. Mm -hmm. So um, growing up, uh, you know, my parents were always like, you're a girl, you can be a teacher, be a teacher, be a teacher, because that's what girls do, um, or be a nurse. And I didn't want to be a nurse. You have to see butts. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so um, I was like, I'll, I'll be a teacher, no you know. <laughs> um, but then I realized that film school was a thing. And I'm like, well, they film stuff in Wilmington. Like, this is cool. Like, I want to do that. And my parents said, girls don't do that. Yeah. You can be a teacher. You can be a teacher. So um, I went to Campbell and I went in as a history uh, major and I was going to get my education certification because mm -hmm. I want to be a high school history teacher and a cheerleading coach and a soccer coach. Um, and I cheered at Campbell and a lot of the girls were communications majors. And I was like, well, that's close to film. Like, that's close enough. And one of mm -hmm. the girls um, would go to L.A. in the summers for internships. And I'm like, here we go. Like, this is this is my chance. So I changed my major to communication um, and didn't really know what PR was. Like I, um, I, I, like I said earlier, I watched the show The Hills. That came out when I was in college and I'm the same age as those girls. And they all worked in PR. And so that kind of gave me an idea of what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so after I graduated, I had to stay an extra semester. Um, but after I graduated, I was like, I'm going to move to LA. And my parents said, no, they didn't want me to go. They said they would cut me off if I left. Mm -hmm. They had set up a, a business for me and my brother to run. And my brother is two years older than me. So he was already running it. And I was helping a little bit. And I was like, this isn't what I want. So um, with $500 in my pocket, Everything I got from Christmas, I pulled out of my driveway the day after Christmas and drove across the country with everything I could stuff in, in my car. I literally got a Ziploc bag and mm. filled it with um, laundry detergent because I'm like, I don't, that, like powder laundry detergent because mm. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have money when I get there. Um, and I had gone on a, a planning trip before to try to do interviews, but no one knew who this girl was from this random Baptist university in North Carolina. <laughs> and I'm up against people that went to USC and UCLA whose dads were on the board at yeah. wherever, whatever studio, yeah. you know, um, all the Nepo babies, like I, I, I couldn't compete. So What's a ne you said a Nepo? Nepo baby, nepotism. It's uh, like when, yeah, yeah, Nepo yeah, babies, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> new, new phrase. Um, so yeah. So then, um, I, I like literally shared a room with someone in a two bedroom apartment. I slept on the floor for three months until my parents realized I wasn't coming home. Mm. They came, they visited me, they bought me a bed at Ikea. Um, <laughs> and I still shared a room with someone at 23 years old, but you're fresh out of college, you don't think anything's wrong with that. Right. Um, and I did three internships that were unpaid at once at different PR firms, um, fashion, entertainment, and events PR. Um, and I worked at Forever 21, I coached cheerleading at a high school in the Valley, I babysat, I trade passed, I did all these things and hustled just to be able to have enough money to survive, to be able to do these unpaid internships. Mm -hmm. And then finally, after almost a year and a half, I got hired on somewhere full time. Um, but it took that long and, wow. and I, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And so it, I just always knew in my gut, like it's what I had to do. It's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. I connected really well with it. Um, even though my parents said, don't do it. <laughs> you know, I, I've now realized at 35, like all the times my parents have pushed me not to do something and I've trusted my gut and gone against them. It's been the best decision that I could have made. Well, let me, let me ask you this then, because I, I can imagine it took a lot of courage to go out to LA, especially with the 500, with a, a bag of detergent. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I can also think that it may be just as daunting to say, all right, I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. Like, what was tougher for you, the, the going to LA or to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to start my own 
PR yeah, company. so I, st I started my own company um, after I've been in PR for about 10 years and I just kind of realized like, okay, now's the time. Like I can do so much more for my clients and I can do it big firms because you have to go through other people to get approval. And I'm the one working with my client every day. I know what they want and what they need. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to go through all these people to get approval on it when they haven't talked to the clients since we signed them? You know, so um, for me at that point, starting my own company was so much easier because I'm like, if I could do LA and I could make it work and I could trust myself and I know I can make that work, I can make this work. Yeah. And within a week of quitting my job or putting in my two weeks notice at my job and just posting on Facebook that, hey, I'm doing my own thing now, I had enough clients to cover my rent. Mm -hmm. So I knew right then like, okay, I got this. Yeah. What did you learn through this whole journey about yourself? Um, that I'm really fucking resilient. Like I, yeah, like I right. can, I can do this, you know. Yeah. And and I like, there's so many areas in my life where I'm insecure, but like this, I know I can do. Like mm. I got it. And and if I just trust my gut and I put the work in, like I know my 50 percent is everyone else's 100. Mm. Mm. I love that one right there. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We're talking about yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah, to soak that in just for a moment, like. Mm. Right? You know, for the pros, resiliency is a big deal, you know, as purpose-driven men, uh, to hear you speak that way, to say, you know, hey, come hell or hot water. You know, yeah. that's that Papa Pope stuff from, uh, 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 what was that, like other series on, on TV, <laughs> on Fox, whatever the case may be, but um, that's good stuff, man. What you got, bro, Kirk? No, I love, and I, just to, I don't want to jump over this, when you talk about parents who are meaning, meaning to, you know, put us in a good space, yeah. but wrong yeah mm. like because i like i have children and it's like i don't tell them what to do i ask them questions i try to figure out what sparks them and their fire and then i support that mm -hmm. because i don't know as yeah. a dad I, I just don't know yeah. so i love that you had the courage as, as jay talked about to do that let's go to la for a minute though okay. let's, i don't want to jump over la <laughs> give us some stories about la like okay. you said in your 20s that it was really doggy dog in a yeah way. yeah what what does that look like for pr like yeah. what is that uh, PR is really cutthroat. It's very, so I was in LA seven years. So if you think about it, I was there pretty much my entire twenties outside of college. Like I, I left right before I turned 30, a couple months before I turned 30. So it was so amazing to be there during that time, but it was very hard. You know, LA is a very transient city. The statistic is if you don't make it, like most people don't make it to the year and a half mark, but if you make it to the year and a half mark, you'll stay forever. Um, so a lot of my friends were, changing all the time because they were leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really hard. PR is also a very, has a very high turnover rate in terms of people switching different places to work or just getting out completely um, because it is so hard. It's a 24 seven job. You're always on and it's hard to turn that off. Mm -hmm. um, especially in entertainment, you're always anticipating something's gonna happen or what if something happens or oh, there, there's this event I gotta get my client into or do I need to go to this thing? So it's one of those things where you just have a, a spare set of all black clothes in your car in case you have to do a red carpet um you know it's it's just very hard um but it was so much fun like i can look back on it I'm like oh my god it was so fun but then i also have to remember there were a lot of times where i was in fetal position in my closet crying like i can't do this anymore it's so hard i'm so alone i don't have any money why am i doing this yeah yeah, mm. yeah. so jumping into mental health a little bit we were talking about earlier does that lend into that for like, like well, for oh, instance, yeah. we're talking about Kanye. Right? Yeah. And like all these celebrities who are really going through this mental health thing. Mm -hmm. And you really share some valid yeah. points about why yeah. they're in this space because it's so much. And some of them get it too soon or mm -hmm. some of them get it too big. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. And like, like I'm someone that's always been very open about my mental health issues, anxiety and depression, you know, since I was younger. And especially as like a Southerner, that's not something we talk about. Um, it's not something that males talk about. It's not something yes. that black males talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like in my family, as I'm sure probably in y'all's too, it's like, well, just don't talk about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. Hmm. Okay. Well, praying about it is not necessarily going to help this chemical imbalance in my brain that's physically happening. We got we to gotta yeah. address it a little bit. So um, in LA, I, I had a lot of really dark times, um, especially when I decided to leave, I was in just a very, very bad depression, anxiety state because I was mm. full on burned out. Yeah. I was burning a candle at both ends. You know, mm. the, I just always tell people, my office was in West Hollywood and, and uh, that's the neighborhood in LA. So <laughs> that's where they have pride. And um, so they shut down the whole area of West Hollywood for pride. And 
um, my building was getting shut. Um, they had to shut the street out. So if I did not leave at a certain time, I would not be able to leave that whole weekend or I'd have to like walk home and my car would, and I wouldn't be able to get my car out. The security had to come and like escort me out of the building because they're like, we're closing the building down and my boss wouldn't let me leave. Mm-hmm. She's like, you still have work to do. You still have work to do. I'm like, they're, the police are escorting me out. Like, I cannot be in this building anymore. They're shutting the whole city down for pride. So, like, things like that were happening. And it just takes a toll on you when you're single, when you're alone. You're, you already don't have a lot of money. You, don't, you can't necessarily pay for therapy. You, you can't necessarily pay for, you know, uh, things just to get your health in order. And it was just hard. It was a domino effect, I think. But the, the best thing I could have done at that time was move, move home and just have a little bit more ease in my life. Got it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. And being an entrepreneur, how much harder is it? Because you got a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. So hearing that you recognize and have the level of self-awareness to get therapy, mm-hmm. right? And stay in therapy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I'm very open with a lot of my clients. Like, guys, you know, I, I'm tapped out today. I'm just having a like, really bad mental health day. And they appreciate that because a lot of them have the same issues that I have and, and they'll talk to me about it. Or they'll say, I'm so sorry, I can, can we cancel that interview? Like, I'm not in a good space. Yes, girl, we'll, we'll reschedule for next week. What do you need? Mm-hmm. You know, and so I feel like I've created a space where I can support them and yeah. they can support me. And it's just like, that's why I wanted to do what I'm doing so I could have that one-on-one with my clients and, and, and try to be open and honest with them about everything that I'm going through. You're tap dancing on that mental health space, I can only assume that one of the ways that you process is through that hiking in nature. Mm-hmm. Is there a space that you have? Like, I, I know I have, um, I, I kind of compare it to Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump had a bench. So oh, I have yeah. a bench in a park that I go to. That's my bench. As far yeah. as I'm concerned, yeah. my name is on it, right? Uh, and I go there, right? That's my space to gather my thoughts, pray, mm-hmm. meditate, or just be quiet. Yeah. Right? And be in stillness and peace. Is there a place like that for you? Um... A, not necessarily a place I uh, my non-negotiable is journaling every single morning mm. like before I do anything I have to journal and some mornings if that's I can't ride today I don't have the capacity that's fine like I, I think I'm on a 400 day streak now of journaling <laughs> straight I, yeah, I, I track it in my phone is, yes. um, but it's yeah. non-negotiable yeah. because that helps me get everything out and then I can make my to-do list for the day of what I have mm. to do. But like, I can get all my emotions out. I can write down what I dreamed about. I can write down what I'm having anxiety about. I can write down who I'm pissed off at. Mm. I'm scared about whatever. Mm. And then I've released it a little bit. Yeah. So that, and then I also meditate as well. I try to meditate twice a day. Um, but then in terms of nature, going to Lake Lynn and seeing the turtles, my little turtle friends, yeah. that's my favorite. <laughs> you, love it. you like the turtles. Yeah. Do you have some at home? No. No? No, no pets? No, no pets. No pets? I can't be bothered and I'm too busy. <laughs> and I think pets cost money and I don't, I don't want to spend any more money. Yeah, than that, I can so. dig that. Pets <laughs> definitely do cost money. They're almost like little children. I, I kind of want to get back into what you do. Yeah. And better understand the, the role of a PR specialist okay. versus like an advertising specialist. Uh-huh. Like what, what, like what does your day to day even look like? Yeah. Mm. So I always tell people advertising is paid. Paid media, that's your commercial, that's your ad that you see in online or print or on the cover or whatever. I don't do that. My clients pay me and I get them organic media. I get them earned media. So I am going to the media via online, print, broadcast, whatever, podcast. I'm going to them and saying, hey, here's my client. Here's three things I could talk about. I think they'd be a good fit. Do you want to talk to them? It's as simple as that. That's what I do. I'm literally just going and selling my clients every single day and trying to connect them with the right media that would work for them and help grow their audience or um, you know, sell whatever they have. Yeah. So that's really as as simple as it is. I don't, there's a lot of pay to play stuff out there. So mm-hmm. sometimes I can, I can notice it pretty easily, but sometimes, you know, you may, maybe you're watching the news and it feels, it does, it's not a commercial, but it feels a little too salesy. That's mm-hmm. normally a pay to play. So somebody's probably paid a couple thousand dollars to get three minute, a mm-hmm. three minute segment on. And I don't do that. I, that, that feels like advertising to me. Yeah. So I really want it to be more organic and like, truly connecting people Mm -hmm. so it's a lasting relationship i think that's the most important thing what what would you say is the biggest difference from doing this in la where you got lamborghinis driving (laughs) to doing this in this neck of the woods yeah um well the clients are different obviously um and but i still kind of 
take the same approach. So I like to do a thought leadership approach with my clients, which is very similar to what you would do in a celebrity. You know, you're trying to sell the celebrity. Okay, well, if my client is technically the company, okay, let's talk to, about the CEO. How did they start this company? What do they do? Let's, let's connect with the person behind it because then people are gonna connect with the company easier. So I try to do a thought leader aspect of like, let's make them a leader in that area, in you know, whatever their field is. So my approach is very similar. Mm -hmm. In LA, it's a lot easier to get things for your clients because you can get them in an event and get their photo taken on a red carpet. And so that's a check mark, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have that here, um, so I have to try a little bit harder for stuff. Um, and my approach is pretty much the same, just very different kind of client base. And I think a lot of people here don't understand what PR is. In LA, they do, and they're like, I want it, I want it, I want it, because it's cool to have a publicist. But here, people yeah. are like, I don't want to spend money on that. I don't understand. Can't I just call WREL? I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we want to talk more about that, especially from it comes from a regional perspective. We've got Melinda Jackson, PR extraordinaire, right here at Raleigh Founded with The Bro Code. We'll be right back. The bros just got stronger. We've added a new member to the team, A. Ruth Proctor. The blonde bombshell herself will be hosting this new segment called The Proctor Report. This segment will share behind the scenes footage and engage questions from our listeners from a female point of view. Tap in to the broco. Dominate, dominate. Please don't ever fix your mouth to try to diss him. I can rearrange your teeth like novice Dennis. Snap like Thanos, turn to dust my competition. But I preach not violence, preach not violence. Wait a second, let me bang on my God. He the truth game, showing off. Yeah, I promise he never took a loss. So I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Oh my God, hear the truth, I ain't just telling y'all. You can count it, he never took a loss. And if I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Oh, wait a second, let me brag on my God. I love my God, keep them bands on me. You may say I'm tripping, I'm your fan only. I let her. Hey guys, you know, it's A. Ruth Proctor here with the Proctor Report and here with the Bro Code. I am here today with Melinda Jackson. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. You are North Carolina Southern Bell. Yep. So you are in PR. How did you get into that space? Well, I started um, after college. So I went to Campbell University and I was a communications major. Okay. And uh, it was around the time that The Hills was on MTV and I'm the same age as those girls and they all worked in fashion PR and Love I was like, it. I want to go to LA and do something like right. that. Um, and so I did. I, I moved to LA with $500 and no wow. job, anything. Um, knew no the one. Girl with a dream. Yep. And right. I was like, I'm going to make this happen. Exactly. And I did. And so um, I, I just worked my way up. I did. I hustled. I did three internships at once that weren't paid wow. until I got enough experience to be it. able to get a full time job. And the rest is history. That was in 2009. So nice, nice. So you are like 12, 13 years in. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is like one of your pivotal moments in the PR space? Um, I think the the big moment for me was deciding to start my own company. Um, when I was doing those first interviews for jobs in LA, you know they always ask you, what do you where do you see yourself in 10 right, years? Right. And I would always say, oh, I want to own my own company. Right. I didn't know what that looked like, but I knew my parents were entrepreneurs and I knew I could do it. And so um, that's just what I said. And then um, a couple years ago, I was, I was at my firm that I was working at and I, I just wasn't happy and I was wow. experiencing burnout. And I'm yeah. like, now's time. Like yes. I, I, I'm a true believer that like, if you will not see the signs, God will force you out of a situation. Yeah, and it, it came in the form of very severe depression and anxiety yeah, on my yes, part and yeah. my body just completely shutting down. And I'm like, oh, it's been 10 years. Like wow. now's the time. Wow. And so now I'm able to, uh, you know, help so many more people yes. on my own without the red tape of a right. bigger firm. Right. Um, and it's just been such a beautiful experience. Amazing. Amazing. So you're a small town country girl from North Carolina and you go to L.A. to go after your dreams and then you start your own firm. So when it comes to you really like coming full circle and being a female in this space, 
because I know that's challenging in mm -hmm. itself. So what would you say to that young entrepreneur that really wants to be in a PR space? Yeah, um, I say just connect with as many people as you can. Network with as many people as you can. And, you know, if you, you can't really find clients, just find one person to take a chance on you. Wow. And just really... Um, you know, cultivate that relationship because it's going to keep growing if you keep at it. I love it. I love it. And what would you say is one of your, your most challenge, challenging clients? So one of my most challenging clients, I had a, a client in LA, I'm not going to name their name, but they um, had, had very bad substance abuse issues okay. and um, it was a very heartbreaking situation, yeah. but it was, it was very challenging because, um, you know, they weren't necessarily getting the help they needed right. and I'm still trying to do my job and, right. and I'm trying to cover up their messes. Right. But at the same time, um, you know, I'm still trying to do my job by getting them press around exactly. things that they're doing. And, right. and it was it was just it was a, hitting a wall every right. single day. It was just really hard and really frustrating because you want to help somebody, right. but you can't. Right. You lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely challenging. And so when it comes to you being in this space, what would you say sets you apart from everybody else? What is different from Melinda Jackson's PR than yeah. everybody else out here? So, um, you know, I feel like most people kind of take a more traditional approach to PR, which is writing a press release, sending it out, hoping it works. Right. And that just doesn't work now. Right. Um, the media landscape has changed so much. And, yes. and I was a very early adopter in, you know, inviting bloggers and influencers to right. my events in L.A. And wow. that's something that I, I, I do here now. Um, and I try to really get to know my clients and think, OK, what are some unique angles that we can take right. to really tell your story right. as opposed to just saying like oh they have this thing that's coming out right. it's like what's the background behind it? Got it and and what are the unique angles we can we can really dive into that people wouldn't normally think about but it'll help build your audience but also get us press at the same time I love it I love it so now you're back here mm -hmm. you're back home and so what do you what would you say is your next thing that you're doing here um, so I have a lot of big contracts, which is awesome, yes, but, definitely. um, I feel like right now my business is at that point where it's like shit or get off the pot. So oh, wow. we're, I, I got, I have two business coaches, um, yes. and Shout out to the business coaches, business they, get coaches. Us, they get us on point. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I, I got, I have one business coach and then I have another one that I can like tap into for yes. some other that, that covers different things. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm really this year really fully expecting to step into that next level of it. my business yes. so I can help other people yes. um, and I'm also in the process of launching a DIY PR course for people that don't necessarily have the funds for a monthly retainer for PR right. so small business owners that will be able to sign up go through the course and try to get themselves a little bit of press before they bring in somebody like me Got it. so that that should be coming up soon once I get some time to to finish the rest of the 25% that's needed to do. Yes, yes. Melinda Jackson here, y'all. Make sure y'all follow her on all social media platforms. If you need a PR, you know where to look for her. Amazing. Avery Proctor here with the Proctor Report. We're back on the Bro Code Show. We've got Melinda Jackson, PR extraordinaire, right here at Raleigh Founded. Melinda, we've asked you a lot of questions. I'm curious, is there like that the project? Like is that project that you're just memorable that you've done in the past or maybe something upcoming? Yeah, so I have a Grammy. Okay. Uh, that's fun. Wait, what? So a Grammy. Yeah, like hold up, right? Let's like, back up. <laughs> Grammy. But it's a very funny story. So my client, um, was up for a Grammy for audiobook mm -hmm. and she was a folk singer. Her name's Janice Ian. So if you guys have ever seen the show uh, or the movie Mean Girls, there's a character oh. on there named Janice Ian because Tina Fey was obsessed with the folk singer Janice Ian. Mm -hmm. And so she named a character after her. It was a whole thing. Wow. So uh, Janice, obviously, you know, being a folk singer, she was very well known. She had won Grammys before. Um, she was not on the industry side. Uh, the good old boys, mm -hmm. like, you know, that are in the Academy, the, the Grammy Voting Academy. <laughs> but a lot of newer people didn't know her. And it was for audiobook, which was like kind of newer category. And Tina Fey won it the year before. So I was like, I'm calling Tina Fey. So I, call, I literally call 30 Rock, like the office wow. building at 30 Rock, get the receptionist. And I'm like, uh, my name is Melinda Jackson. I represent Janice Ian. Can I have Tina Fey's assistant? And they're like, what's it regarding? I was like, it's a uh, Grammy campaign, blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. 
I get Tina Fey's voicemail. I get to Tina Fey's voicemail and like leave her this whole thing. And I'm like, Tina, like, can you just campaign for us? Because it really, like a Grammy campaign or any award show campaign is like a presidential campaign, mm -hmm. truly. Like you're mm -hmm. actually calling people and like, can you vote? Can you post? Can you whatever? Can you post this graphic saying for your consideration? If you go to New York or LA during these times, there's huge billboards that say for your consideration and it has whatever the project is. Um, so yeah, all that to say, um, we ended up winning that, mm. and I was the publicist on the on the project, and so I was listed as one of the people because you know they put the producer and all that stuff, and I was a publicist on it. Um, and we beat Rachel Maddow, Michelle Obama, Ellen DeGeneres, mm. and um, Hillary Clinton that year. So what? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was like right. huge hitters, <laughs> and this little folk singer who's about this tall. This little cute Jewish lady won, beat all those other women out. So she gets up there and does like a beautiful speech, and it was very hilarious. Um, and then I was supposed to, I didn't, that was at the pre ceremony. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to the regular ceremony. I was going to take their tickets. So I went to meet my boss out there. My boss scanned my ticket to go in and use the bathroom. And so my ticket was voided. I couldn't go in. Mm. <laughs> and I won a oh, Grammy. Wow. I was on it. My client won a Grammy. And I was not, like, my ticket was void. I was standing there with all the people with fake tickets. But anyway, I did get a certificate. So I have a certificate at my house. It's not framed. I've never framed it. I don't know why. But you don't get the statue? No. Right. Only one person gets a statue. That's uh, the artist. And then you have to pay for the I'll additional those, statues. Yeah. But I was poor. And I was like, I don't have $500 to <laughs> buy this. So it's like my fun party trick when people come to my house. It's literally like... Like, and nobody breaking in my house, but it's um, <laughs> it's in my coffee table, like on the second shelf, under a bunch of vintage guitar magazines that have like Nirvana on the cover. Wow. So like, it's literally just in a, a Manila folder, like right under all that. So that's my most exciting campaign, but uh, that I've ever worked on, and I, that's all my party trick. I'm like, I'm a Grammy winner. Yeah. Um, okay. But uh, right now, I just have like a lot of really amazing stuff that I. I'm working with bigger national agencies to work on bigger brands, so I can't really say what I'm doing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's huge contracts for me and it's, it's high stakes, but I'm like very honored that people would trust me with their, their projects. Yeah, I love it. Well, I look forward to Grammy and the Bro Code show being in the same conversation. Right <laughs> don't scan your ticket. Indeed, yeah, right, like, to yeah. go to the bathroom. Indeed. That, that, was, that was one of those times where it's just like, why? Why did this happen to yeah, me? Yeah, I had to pee right now. I know, I know. My, my boss, I'm like, why did you do that? But then the next year, I was re redeemed. I got to go back to the Grammys with Boys to Men because they were a client mm. at the time. And that was just the most fun. They're the sweetest boys. And I guess they're actually men, but yeah. um, they're just so nice. And it was fun being on the red carpet with them because all the other celebrities are fangirling over them. And they're like, can I, can I talk to them? Can I? Yes, you can, Jared Leto. Like, yes, do you want me to take a picture of you guys? Like, sure, here Absolutely, you go. Absolutely, yeah. So. Indeed, I yeah. love it. What you got, bro? Oh, oh well, did you want to? After that, you kind of like, well, wow, wow. <laughs> Michelle Obama, you were still thinking about the honey, right? Yeah. <laughs> What does she smell like? Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Michelle. That's exactly what we were talking about. Right? Yeah, he has history. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, milk and honey. Um, now, I'm just curious, after all, all of what you've seen and been through, and you're still young in the game, you know, yeah. what, what are some of the things that you wish you knew then that you know now? Yeah, um, I wish that I would have not listened to my parents and I would have tried to get higher jobs because mm. there are always people you know reaching out to me and saying hey I work at Warner Brothers and uh, like Warner Brothers Records and and there's a PR position available like you should apply you should apply and I never would mm. and I really wish that I wouldn't have had the loyalty that I had mm. because I think things would look a lot different obviously I'm grateful that you know how things turned out um, but I wish I would have had a little bit more self-worth and, and tried mm. harder um, I wish that I would have um, you know, advocated for myself for more money or things would have been a lot easier, yeah. a lot easier. And, and today that's something I still have to do, you know, I'm consistently undervaluing myself. Mm -hmm. And PR is a monthly retainer yeah. that, that clients pay and I'm always working with people's budgets, but at some point I'm like, there's, there's no way they don't have this money. Why am I, you know, devaluing myself and I'm chasing that invoice around when they're not even thinking about me, you know? Um, so that's something that I wish I would have been better about and still kind of wish I would have been better about. Mm -hmm. When did you, because I read an article about that such thing, mm -hmm. and you kind of said there was this moment where your light bulb went off. Yeah. And you started to say, no, I'm asking yeah. for what I'm worth. Yeah. And if that's not my client, then that's fine. Yeah. 
how do you feel about that? Because I hear a lot. I hear a lot of women talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Asking for their worth. Yeah. Um, you you talked about that, and you've also talked about you know like speaking your voice when yeah. you talk about your parents. Mm -hmm. How does it feel now that you are asking for your worth? Yeah. In your business. Um. Well, two two things. You know, my my parents both come from uh, finance and and tax background, and my they were obviously very worried about me starting my own company. They didn't understand what PR was. They didn't understand how it worked and how I was going to get paid and all this stuff. And then um, during COVID, my my dad was was uh, you know looking over my tax stuff because they have some LLCs that I'm on, so all of our stuff is connected. So he he saw my tax stuff and he's like, oh, um, I saw how much money you made last year. Uh, yeah, you're all right. You're good. I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been telling you. Like I'm I'm good. You got to trust me. I can make my money. Like your scarcity mindset doesn't need to be mine anymore. And that's something that I've really had to overcome is that scarcity mindset of, oh shit, the money's not going to come in. The money's always going to come in. Money is energy. It's always going to come in. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Don't hold on to it because when you hold on to it like that, no, um, which I can go on and on and on about that. But, you know, then when I realized, okay, these clients, like, I mean, I'll be straight up, like PR across the board, monthly retainers charge at $2,000. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's everybody else. Mm -hmm. how it is industry-wide obviously that changes a little bit but yeah. when these clients are coming to me and they're trying to pay $500 a month and I'm like oh, well I want to help them out you know whatever but the $500 a month clients are expecting $5,000 worth of work <laughs> but the $5,000 a month clients are happy with anything I get them I'm like what this is backwards mm -hmm. like I can't like you just have to say no they can go find somebody else if that if that means they find somebody that's bootleg that's on them mm -hmm. but like they have to invest in me because I will I will grow their business. Mm -hmm. But that's also on them what they do with the press that I give them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't I can't make them do anything with that. I'm going to get it once the clients come to them. You know, it's on them to to translate that. But yeah, I mean, realizing like, oh my God, why am I wasting my time? That was the the one of the best things I could have done. And you know, even now realizing like, oh. I can ask for more because I'm worth mm. that now. Mm. I've been in the game a long time. Mm. I have proven results. You know, those insecurities of the people that I work for are not mine yeah. anymore. Yeah. My parents' scarcity mindset is not mine anymore. Mm. I can I can start fresh. I love that. So so for the people listening and watching, how can they get in contact with you and keep up with what you're getting into? Yeah. So I'm really bad about posting on my professional Instagram, but you can find <laughs> me on there. Um, it's at Melinda Jackson PR. My website is melindajacksonpr.com. Um, on there, you can sign up. I have a, a form you can fill out to get more information on the PR course that I'm going to be launching, hopefully in a couple months. It's like well, a master class? Uh-huh, like mm. a DIY PR course okay. for small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's essentially what I would do in a consulting call with mm -hmm. somebody, but it's just all typed out, and it kind of lets them go through their own you know, brand DNA and figure out what they need. Um, for themselves and mm -hmm. get them in a position so they can do their own PR until they're ready for somebody else to do it. So okay. it saves me time and it, it provides for everybody else. So that all that information is on my website as well. So melindajacksonpr.com, at melindajacksonpr. My email is on all the things. I'm pretty easy to track down. Okay. <laughs> I love that scarcity mindset, like Ooh. not living in a sense, like I have more than enough. Like yeah. everything that I need. Uh, me and uh, the bros always talk about blessings coming from people. You know, uh, we didn't touch on network, but that alone speaks to why mm -hmm. um, having the boldness, the audacity, the, the being tenacious, uh, or the fortitude, if you may, to ask, right? Because the worst people could say mm -hmm. is no. Yep. Yeah. And the more no's, you, quicker you are to a yes. Like, mm -hmm. that's real. It's all numbers. And that's what PR is, yeah. truly. I'm getting mm. rejected for other people all day, every day. And I'm like, it's fine. Somebody's going to say yes. Somebody's mm. going to say yes. <laughs> and it one yes, and then it's, it, it starts. So the dam yeah. breaks, and then we're, yes. we're rolling. One, one yes. Um, in my years of sales, we, I would always teach my clients, you know, when you spell no backwards, it spells on. Mm -hmm. you know, on to the next person. You know, so we've done a little research, okay. right? This is another segment. This segment okay. right here is a picture segment. Okay. And, you know, we went on social media. A lot of the pictures that we did in our research, you've already shared with the world. Yeah. But they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, Melinda, we don't need a thousand. Okay. That's but, fine. But we would like to know, look, why did you share this with the world? Okay. You know, who's in it? Okay. And, uh, you know, 
What did it mean to you? Okay. Let's start with this one right here. So this is a photo of me um, at Loch Ness in mm. Scotland. Um, and I'm holding a North Carolina flag. Um, and everyone there was just like, what is happening? Why is this girl waving this flag? And of course, my redneck mom was just like, yes, baby. Yes. Let's hold on. Get it over here. Get over here. And I'm with my friend who is from Scotland and her mom. And her, they're like, what is happening? But this trip was like very impactful for me because, you know, I had just started my business and, um, I didn't get to travel when I was in LA. Like mm. I was so stunted because I didn't have any money and I'm stuck and I'm busy all the time. But I started, I, you know, moved back I, and I started my own business and I had the time and I could work remotely. Mm. And I was able to go on this trip to the UK with my mom and like see all of her favorite places mm. over there. Cause her and my dad have been, and, and you know, I have a really good friend that lives in the Scottish Highlands. And so okay. I got to go and meet her family and do all that stuff. And like that wouldn't have been possible had I, not started my own company so that was like a really empower empowering trip for me yeah. um and kind of started off the the whole journey of like just being able to work remotely and travel the world i have to ask because you know you mentioned to us and i looked at the picture you have a north carolina flag mm -hmm. in lockness yeah so Clearly, one of two things happened. Either they had North Carolina flags over there, or you brought that with you. Oh, I brought it with me. It goes everywhere with me. So <laughs> when I when I lived in L.A., my brother sent it to me, and he's like, you better represent. So wow. I had it hanging up in my apartment. Um, and now, like, anywhere I go, I, I take, like, if it's not here, I, mm. I take it with me. And, like, you know, on top of a mountain in Southern California, hiking, I'm holding it up. And, um, you know. Yeah. And I have pictures of me in front of Buckingham Palace with it. And it was so funny because that was the week that um, the Panthers were playing in London. So really? everybody was like, yeah, because it was all North Carolina fans. Yeah. Wow. That's I pretty cool. Like that. That we got to get our own flag. We got to get yeah. a vocal yeah. flag. Yeah. That way and I'll, hike, I'll hike with it and I'll just be like, yeah. I like that. I, like I really that. like that. Yeah. I know we got the bomber jackets coming, but definitely got to get a flag. I love that. It'll be your it. flat Stanley. Okay. Well, tell us oh. about this one. I love oh, this. Oh, that's one. me um, at uh, Horseshoe Bend in Arizona. It was on my hiking trip last summer. Um, I was with my friend Cassidy. He mm. took that for me. Uh, still a little bitter about that trip because he's so tall and he kept leaving me on mountains um, and he made me hike through a river. But uh, I've gone through therapy for it, so we're good. <laughs> but um, again, this is another example of like I get to do what I love. Like yeah. I, you know, and the still the realness of it all. You know, we're on a shuttle going up to um, Angel's Landing to do this really hard hike at six o'clock in the morning and I barely have phone service but my clients emailing me I'm like shit I got because it, it was <laughs> nine o'clock here I'm like I gotta I gotta get service so I can send them this PDF yeah. you know like you know it's just one of those things but uh, that, that was a really fun really fun time I, yeah, I'm, looks, I'm meant to be in the southwest yeah it looked pretty cool I was wondering about that tell me about this one um, that is my wonderful assistant Taylor that was at Raleigh <laughs> Fashion Fest recently um, and yeah I just I need to be better about getting out and, and talking to people because I think COVID's made me uh, a little bit of a hermit. But yeah, I'm very extroverted, as you can tell. And so I just love being around people. And yeah. I love wearing big ass hats and, uh, and leather jackets. That's yeah. my LA style. So. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> well, this segment right here, we have asked you a whole lot of questions. So now we get to flip the script. This okay. is your opportunity okay. to ask us anything you like. Okay. You can ask us individually or collectively. Oh, my God. Okay, this is so fun, and I didn't know this was a thing, and so there's a lot of pressure. Um, okay, so I would like to know, and I'm going to be very judgy on this, um, what's everyone's favorite song? Mm. So, like, song, like, favorite song in the entire world, like, you mm. are about to die, and this is, like, you're, you're like, I want to hear this song before I die. Mm -hmm. Favorite song. Wow. Okay. Is this one? Okay, you, you could do three if you really wanted. I, I'll try to one, but... Because I'm asking this because I can't even... Okay, I'll tell you guys what my favorite song is. So, my favorite band in the entire world is Foo Fighters. Rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins, their drummer, recently passed away. Um, I've seen them 13 times. I've met them. I've, like, I know them. Like, they're just the most amazing dudes on the planet. Best band in the world. But my favorite song by them is Everlong. And it's, like, this beautiful, beautiful song. And, like, watching them play, like, Dave Grohl mm. does it acoustic. And then it's just... The rain was coming down at one of the shows, and he's playing acoustic, and yeah. it's just beautiful. But anyway, mm. you guys probably don't know what that song is. I have no clue. It's no. okay. <laughs> not, not it's Foo Fighters. No way. Yeah. But you know who Foo Fighters are? I have heard okay, of the Foo Fighters. Yes. Dave Grohl was the drummer in Nirvana. That's all you need to know. I heard of Nirvana. Yes. Yeah. 
I, I think for, for, for me, I, I got to go back to my childhood. So mine would be Tupac and Scarface. Wow. Okay. Uh, that was one of the songs, man. I remember being in, um, uh, it was the only year in school that I had to go to summer school. And, you know, I don't know. I just connected with that song. I just put some, some, some eights, eight by nines in the car. I don't know. But, it, yeah, Tupac and... Uh, Scarface, smile. Just had it bump in yeah, and give you a massage yeah, as you yeah. drove down the road. And it was just a vibe. Yep. Yeah. So I go with that. So do you listen to that now when it gets I warm still can. and you turn you turn I, the I can. You, you roll the windows down, that's your summer song. Timeless. Yep. Timeless. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Next. Man. I'm trying to think of something that connects to a life moment. And, uh, okay, favorite album? Like, okay, what's what's that? Artist. What's that? Like, summer in high school just got mm, your license album. Yeah, yeah. That because that's everybody's you like. Case and you, yeah, yeah, you got, yeah, you got, yeah, you got, and you almost wreck. You like, let nobody borrow this CD. Like this one right here. My 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 the, my banger because you know, summer I got my car, I got my two tens in the back. And I was listening a lot to the Belly soundtrack. Um, Here comes the boom. Oh my! God. Was the one my parents got mad at me every day. I come, they're like, "We heard you coming from like yep. the far end of the neighborhood." Yep, that was my brother. Yo, I was like, "Hey, I got, I gotta let them know. Yeah. Gotta let them know." Um, I don't know if that would be the song, but that, that's the one my mind immediately kind of went okay. to. Okay, I realize I should have asked a different question, but it's fine. No, no, no that's good. Okay. That's a good okay. question. Okay. I okay. had to think okay. on that one. So mine would be also a Tupac, but I'm not going to okay. do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mine would be Brenda has a baby, but okay. I'm not going to do that since he already said that. Mm -hmm. My, uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Purple Rain. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When Doves Cry. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. I, like Prince, like, yo, like, different. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. can I ask another question? Yeah, please. Yeah. Karaoke song. Oh, I got oh, that one. Baby got that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mine is uh, Music Soul Child. Oh, and I'm, I'm blanking on it. Uh, anything Music Soul Child. I don't even know what that is. You, uh, uh, <laughs> you haven't that's heard Music Soul Child? That's fine. Like, yeah. hey, you know, we're even. Yeah, we're right. even. You've heard Music Soul Child. I'm sure I would Soul. know if, like, yeah, so many things. No, oh, okay. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. okay, it's fine. Okay, I'll Google it. I'll Google it. I, 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 no, I, 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 I can do that. It's the only good job. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, don't play. I get Shout it. out to the music, Soul Child, baby. We need you on this program. <laughs> okay. And here's the Soul Child. Mine would be Michael Jackson. Mm. But which one? What song? Thriller. Yeah. Okay. You got to do the dance, though. Really? Uh oh. I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. I'm. I'm about to blow all your minds uh -oh. right now. You okay. know what mine is? What's that? You're never gonna guess it. And I won a karaoke contest in LA singing this song at Dave and Buster's. Okay. With salt and pepper, something. Pony. Uh, Genuine? Yes. What? And everyone's like, what? And I didn't, I was like, I'm just going to do this. It's funny. Wow. Like, whatever. I didn't realize I how gross it. this song was. No video? No and, video uh, on this? I do have video. Uh -oh. I do have it. We'll show you after. Uh -oh. I didn't realize how gross this song was. And I get into the second verse and I was like, <laughs> and I'm just like screaming. But I won. I won. So in, in Hollywood. Did you dance? Um, yeah, I'm sure I did. It was my birthday party. I'm sure okay. I was drinking some bright orange cocktails from Dave and Buster's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, well, we have Melinda Jackson, PR extraordinaire. <laughs> she loves genuine rodeo, all that good stuff, and everything in between, man. On the Bro Code Show. We'll be right there. <laughs> the Bro Code TV show was created to amplify the voices of others and share courageous stories of community leaders, organizations, and businesses that are doing great things. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., you can catch Bro Troy, Bro Kirk, and Bro Smith for another courageous conversation. You can find those conversations on our YouTube channel at Bro Code TV Productions and also our audio podcast channels, which are on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts at The Bro Code Show. Tap in to The Bro Code Experience. We all we got. I'm, I'm gonna send you a couple bars of this okay, music. Okay. Song, I want these bars oh, to be the bars. Oh, Lord. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. You don't know what it is. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. I'm surprised that you called. Cause the way you looked at me, I thought you were gonna see me no more.
Since you didn't wanna give me your name, <laughs> the one that you were taking me, it wasn't taking me. But anyway, <laughs> what you doing tonight? <laughs> 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 I don't know if I was bored when that song came out. Oh, you want <laughs> it? Oh, 35. We're back on the Bro Code Show with Melinda Jackson. Melinda, we always talk about words matter. You know, before the show, we asked you, you know, what's one word that you'd use to describe yourself and maybe use in times of, uh, <laughs> of uncomfort? Yeah. And you said loud. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I said, well, what should do it here? No, I no, understand. I'm loud. Listen, I, cheer, I was a cheerleader for 12 years. I'm loud. I have one volume. It's loud. Boca <laughs> Grande. Yeah, Boca yeah. Grande was my name in Spanish class, okay. so big mouth. <laughs> well, we want to celebrate you. So first of all, congratulations on four years of being an entrepreneur and having the courage yeah. to step out and, and, and do you, right? Congratulations. But we have our $2 bill. We wrote You Mattered on the front, your name. And this is just our way to celebrate you. On the back, our whole team signed it, and we wrote loud on the back for you, just in case you forget. So yeah. we appreciate you. I love this. And I, I want to tell you guys, I have a very special connect connection to $2 bills. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cry. My, my papa, um, he, he passed away a few years ago, but he was very, he was like 91 when he passed away, so he lived a long life. He always collected money in like a, a grandpa way, like silver dollars and special mm -hmm. quarters and things like that, and that's what he always gave us. And so in my wallet, I, have this all these years have carried around a two dollar bill that he gave me mm -hmm. and there have been many times in my life where like I needed two dollars for something and I'm, I almost had to give it away but something always came through and I didn't have to like paying for parking or whatever and so like this is gonna go with the two dollar bill wow. that I carry around with my from my papa wow, so thank you special. guys Yo, that's really special man well we appreciate that too I'm gonna try not to share the fat boy team oh, yeah. but <laughs> nonetheless you know just like that uh, two dollar bill you are unique and you are rare so uh, just a small piece of appreciation just to say, hey, man, this is a bro code experience. Indeed. Thank you, guys. Yeah, indeed. Well, you know, on the bro code show, we always end with uh, positivity. Tonight is no different. Tonight's quote says, don't adapt to the energy in the room. Influence the energy in the room. It's your boy, bro Troy. Bro Smith. And bro Kurt. And we are the bro code. Another one. It's a bro <laughs> Indeed. So. We're going to do a quick picture. You can sit there. We're going to do a quick picture. Uh, Melinda, we would ask you to ask me outside. Uh, The Broco TV show was created to amplify the voices of others and share courageous stories of community leaders, organizations, and businesses that are doing great things. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., you can catch Bro Troy, Bro Kirk, and Bro Smith for another courageous conversation. You can find those conversations on our YouTube channel at Broco TV Productions and also our audio podcast channels, which are on Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcast at The Bro Code Show. Tap in to The Bro Code Experience. We all we got. We always say that hope plus options equals success. When there's a lack of hope, oftentimes gravitate towards unfavorable decisions. When we can provide hope plus options, our children will ultimately be better. Uh, through love, consistency, opportunity, and exposure, that's how we really touch these kids. That's how we empower them. That's how we inspire them. And that's how we encourage them. And that's what we do well here at Y4C.